What you're about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock, Captain Braddock, ready. Carl Muller was a man who wanted to get out of debt. He needed money quickly, and the result was a case we call desperate money. Carl was an old man who wouldn't give up his small tailor shop because he didn't want to be a burden to his son, Alan. Each morning, Alan would walk his dad to the shop on the way to the bus. After 20 years, I should know already which way the lock turns. 20 years ago, your eyes were better. Look, Pop. I've said this so many times, I ought to have a rubber stamp made, but why don't you give up the shop and retire? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first thing in the morning, and he starts again with that. Alan, as long as your papa has two hands and a heart, he stays in business. Look, Pop, I know how you feel about not giving up, and I admire your courage, but after all, Courage. That's a good word, Alan. Only nowadays, sometimes, I think it's a forgotten word. On courage, your mama and I got married with no money. <coughs> On courage, we came to this country. But today, a fellow like you goes with a nice girl like Trudy for a year already, and he don't get married. And if I ask why, the answer is, we don't have enough backlog. But it's true, Pop. Backlog. Backlog. Uh, you from backlog in the old days. Perhaps we had something more important. Backbone. And maybe it takes more courage not to rush into a marriage and start off with debts. Ellen, you can't fool your papa. You don't get married because you think I'm too old to work. And you can't support me and a wife too. Mm. But it's such foolishness. Why should I give up the shop? It's doing very good. It is. Then why haven't you let me see the books for the past three months? If I need a bookkeeper, I'll hire one. And besides, next month comes the fall rush. I'll have so much business with dry cleaning and all those alterations. I'll keep my hands full. And what about your eyes? You don't worry about my eyes. I see everything I should. Some things I wish I didn't. Oh, right now I see something very pretty. Hi, Trudy. Hi. Gosh, I thought I'd miss the bus for sure this morning. Hello, Papa Hi, Carl. Hey, how about one of those for me, after huh? After last night? You know, I had to make coffee for your son last night after the movie, and it was after midnight. After midnight? At your best girl's house? And you sit and drink coffee? <laughs> Maybe it's you who should have the eyes examined. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we'll miss the bus. See you later, Pop. Uh, bye. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Mueller. Oh, hello, hello, Mr. Harvey. And how are you feeling? Oh, me? I'm fit as a fiddle. Yes? Business is not so good, huh? Oh, wait, you'll see next month. This rack wouldn't be big enough to hold all my work. It'll be October, you know. Yes, I know. And I, uh, I hope you have some money for me today, Mr. Mueller. Uh, well, you see, uh, this month was a little slow. Well, that's what you told me last month. You know, I just work for the landlord, and my job is to collect the rents that are due. Now, if it's up to me, of course... Oh, I... sure, sure, I know. But also the landlord knows that 20 years I paid my rent on time. It's a long time. Yes, it is, Mr. Mueller. But you know, as they say, there's no sentiment in business, and I've got orders to collect the two months' rent that you owe, or you'll have to move out. To move out? Yes. Hiya, Pop. You're late today. Yeah, I know. What's for lunch today? Oh, what you like. Papa Carl's meatloaf on rye. Hey! There you are, Pop. Mmm. Why can't my old lady make meatloaf like this? 
It's the new type cookbooks. She's got a new one. It's a dilly. Everything with sherry wine. Another month of them recipes and the whole family will wind up in the alcoholics ward. Hey, what's with you? You're not eating? I'm not very hungry today, Joe. Worried about your eyes again, huh? My eyes? <laughs> oh, no, all of a sudden at the least of my troubles. No, Joe. It's the store. I got to have a hundred dollars by tomorrow or I lose it. And it's such a little bit of money, Joe. I only need it for such a little while. Two weeks, maybe. On the level? You really think you could pay it back? Oh, sure, sure. A couple of weeks, business will be good again. Besides, I've got some money to collect. Mrs. Jonas owes me $10, and... Uh... <sighs> no wonder you're running in the red. Letting people put it on the cuff. Pop, you gotta quit trusting people. You're a dummy. Yeah. But the nicest dummy I ever met. Tell you what, I uh, know a guy who I might lend you the money. Oh, Joe, that would be wonderful. Only uh, he charges plenty high interest. It would be worth it, Joe, if he would lend me the money. Who is he? Well, his name is Gus. He uh, operates out of Frankie's gym on 2nd Street. Only pop. This has got to be on a strict QT. Not a word to no one, not even your son. Oh, sure, sure. He would be the last one. I promise you, I keep it a secret. Now, you fix it up for me, Joe. All right. Now, drink your beer. I'll go call him. For someone? I'm looking for a gentleman named Gus. Who wants him? My name is Carl Miller. Oh, Joe Strang. Sit down. I'm Gus. Oh. You wouldn't think I was quite handy with these things, would you? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, now, about the money. No one I... would ever take me for a fighter now. I was really stacked in those days. Now, <laughs> I couldn't fight my way out of paper bags. <laughs> How much do you want? If I could just have a hundred dollars. A hundred? How long do you want? Now, this here is an Everlast boxing glove. It's a good glove. It'll never bust out on the scene. How long do you want the hundred? I give it back in two weeks. Remember, it's between you and me. Oh, absolutely. I promise, Joe. I wouldn't even tell it my son. Seeing that you're Joe's friend, I'll make it easy on you. Twenty bucks interest. Oh, thank you. Okay. Now, like I said before, it's just between you and me. Otherwise, oh. <laughs> you scare easy, Pop. Like I said before, I, I couldn't fight my way out of a paper bag. Mm -hmm. See you two weeks from tonight. Yes, sir. I'll be here at 8 o'clock, sharp. That's nice, Pop. I always like to see a guy who shows up on time. Me, I always keep my dates, too. That's what we got in common. That and a hundred iron men. Mm. Iron men? <laughs> to some is merely a topic of conversation, but to many others, unseasonable weather can mean the difference between success or failure in business. And to poor Carl Muller, with the threat of borrowed money over his head, this delay in fall weather meant utter disaster. Mm -hmm. Well, you take care of that baby, all right. That's all right. You're welcome. Oh, bye. Pop, why'd you come down so early? Uh, I couldn't sleep, so I got up. Oh, those headaches again. I heard you up all night. Well, maybe this will help. It's the $40 for your new glasses. I thought I'd have it a lot sooner, but, well, you know how it is. Yes, Alan, I know how it is for you to save $40. All right, all right, here, get your glasses. Today, and don't argue about taking the money. But thank you. This time, I don't argue. Good. I'm late. I'll see you tonight, Pop. Bye.
I'm going to give you the money back, Gus. I thought by this time, sure. But if you wait just a few weeks. You got some for me now? Sure. Sure. Sixty dollars. Yeah. So you see, that is half what I owe you already. Okay. Thank you. Soon I'll bring you the other 60. You'll bring 140 next week. What do you mean? I owed you 120. I paid you half. It's three weeks' interest. 20 per week. 20? A week? From now on, it's going up. 40 a week. Oh. Oh, no. You can't charge such a rate. It's, it's illegal. That's the word we don't use around here. I set the rates, and broken down guys like you without collateral has got to be satisfied. Oh, you thief! To take from an old man his blood. Shut up! Oh. Now, if you want to see your son lying around an alley some morning, just open up your yap once more. Oh. Now get him out of here. <laughs> Trudy, that was some dinner. Oh, I'm so glad. Do you really think the pot roast turned out good, Papa Carl? Oh, you made it like a real German house, Frau. And the potato pancakes. Mm. My own wife, rest her soul, couldn't have done better. Now I know you love me. I'll mm. go get us some coffee. Pop, if it was so good, how come you hardly ate anything? I wasn't hungry. Is it a crime that a man shouldn't be hungry? Look, Pop, you can't kid me. You haven't been yourself for the past couple of weeks. What's bothering you? Nothing, I tell you. What did you do with the money for your new glasses? Uh, I, uh, well, I paid a bill. I'll get the glasses later. That money was to take care of your eyes, not to sink into that lousy shop. That lousy shop took care of your mama and me and you too for years. And it will keep on. Alan, Papa, not now. Well, I'm sick of Pop making a martyr of himself for me. But I'm sick of you running my life. Oh, I wish you two would get married and leave me alone. Carl Miller can take care of himself. Well, this is a fine thing. And I work so hard to make a nice dinner for it. Oh, yes, of course, yeah, Trudy. You're right. Now sit down and stop this foolish argument. I'm sorry. I told you he'd be closed. Hello, Eddie. Where's the old man? Well, home, I guess. Where's home? Well, how should I know? What do you want with him? I can tell you, but not here. <laughs> I, I tell you, I don't know where the old guy lives. I'll give him a message in you the morning. You know, well, this is for God. I'm not knowing where the old man lives. Gus, I was only trying to help the old man. You know I've always leveled with you. Haven't I always paid you back any dough I might have borrowed? And, and that goes for anyone I've ever sent around to you, too. Look, I make one mistake. Is that any reason to be sore? One mistake's all I need to send me to the pen. Did you ever figure that? But the old man won't sing, I promise you. Look, Gus, I'll pay you the 40 bucks this week, and, and, and then when you lay off till he brings you the 100. You got the 40 with you? Yes, yeah, sure. There you are. Now, you'll give him a break, huh? I got news for you. He's a bad risk. So I want $140 by Monday night. Otherwise, what you got the other night was only the preliminaries. Now, beat it. <laughs> the hot spell had broken at last, and it looked as though Carl's business was going to pick up. Oh, Papa Carl, the most wonderful thing has happened. Well, tell me now, you look like a perfect sunrise. Oh, I feel like stars and moons and... Oh, Papa Carl, I had lunch with Alan today. Is that unusual? This time it was. He said we're getting married this weekend. Oh, 
Trudy Hawkins. Oh, and wouldn't you know it? After all this time, he proposed to me in a crowded coffee shop. I, I still don't know what decided him. It was the Patrost. You see, truly, we millers can resist perfume or moonlight or even a pretty face. But Patros, never. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I've got to get home. I've got a million things to do. Mm -hmm. The boss gave me the rest of the week off for a wedding present. I hope you're as happy as I am. Truly, whatever would happen now, it wouldn't matter. I got my wish. You and my Alan getting married. <laughs> hey, you. What do you want? A hundred and forty bucks, you got it? No. Not today. But tell Gus in another week. Gus ain't interested. There ain't a hundred and forty bucks in the whole joint. Come on, let's tear it up. Let's tear it up. Joe, what are you doing? Look for him, taxi. Central, 5400. Captain Braddock. Uh, Captain Braddock, I, I got something to spill. But you gotta protect me. You'll have protection. Who is this? Well, uh, this is. Well, th th it's a mistake. Hello? Hello? Operator, uh, this is Captain Braddock. I just had a call. Will you trace it, please? Thank you. I'm Captain Braddock from the Racket Squad. What do you have? Little information. Who called my office from this place a short time ago? I wouldn't know. Not very busy this time of day. You ought to know who's been in. Well, I'm sorry, Captain, but all I have is a public phone. People use it all day. And you have no idea who it could have been? Well, how should I know who the guy was? How did you know it was a guy? Oh. Well, dames mostly use the drugstore to phone. Joe, you know Moral Man Mueller pretty well. Did he ever... Captain Braddock, are you down here because of what happened next door? Well, exactly, but what happened? Two guys came in and wrecked a tailor shop. I better have a look. You feel a little better now, Papa? This is Captain Braddock. Is this your folly? I'm engaged to Mr. Mueller's son. Uh, Mr. Mueller, do you know who the men were? No. No. Nobody's been around to sell you insurance or protection of any kind? No. What kind of fiends would do such a thing like that? Do you know if your fiancé was in any kind of trouble? Of course not. No, my Alan is a good boy. They get married in a few days. 
Now, if you're shielding someone, Mr. Mueller, you must tell me. You'll get protection. Captain Braddock, Papa's very upset now. Perhaps later, when Alan comes home. Uh, no, don't call him. He mustn't come home from work. Uh, I'm all right now. Yes, Papa. We'll try and figure something out later. All right, if you know anything at all, call me. And I'd like to speak to his son anyway. Yes, of course. Come, Papa. We'll go home now. Uh, if only they didn't break my glasses. Uh, uh. They don't stop at anything, do they? Joe, Papa just told Alan why a store was wrecked. You mean he told him about Gus? Yes, and Alan went over there. No. I tried to stop him, but he was just like crazy. And I know he took his army gun, and, oh, Joe, I wanted to call that captain, and I'm so confused I forgot his name. Trudy, you stay out of this. I'll go call him. You go back to the old man. All right. Whatever you say, Joe. Oh, come on, Mabel. Why won't you have a drink with me? Hey, Scram, i got to use the phone. Who's been drinking? Come on, Scram. Now, look, kid, uh, put the gun down and let's uh, talk this over quiet-like. Nice and friendly, like your boys talked to my father today, huh? Look, the Army gave me a medal for using this on guys that were sweethearts compared to you. I didn't mean the boys to get out of hand today, but I... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mabel. Hey, what about tonight? Well, this time I can meet you about 8 o'clock. What do you say? Still pretty handy with my fist. <laughs> Come on, boss. Let's dump this guy. Just a minute, I got a few more things I want to say to him. Your old man and I got a little unfinished business. And until that's squared away, um, that's to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and that's for your old man. And in case you get any idea about cops, this is just a sample of what you get for being a hero. There's not going to be any next time. This time you pay, Gus, and the interest is going to run awfully high. And so Papa Carl was one of the few to ever escape the clutches of an illegal moneylender. But as long as people rush headlong into debt, there will always be another Gus. Your state sets a law controlling the amount of interest that can be charged on any loan. And there are banks and other legitimate financial organizations from which to borrow money. So if you borrow money, make sure you're dealing with a bank or a licensed loan company and that you're not being forced to pay more than the legal interest rates. Your local bank will be glad to give you this information. Otherwise, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will. But there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See you next week, same time, same station.